Hey man, say man, this is the A Man Show, and I'm back for more content. Darren Fox has been one of the best young guys in the NBA, but his team struggles made us fans if he's a franchise cornerstone. Lego. I pay my dues now, I'm a main man. Fox was the fifth overall pick of the 2017 draft with a loaded draft class with Jason Tatum, a rising superstar, along with all-star Donovan Mitchell and Bam Abadayo, along with good players like Lonzo Ball, Marco Fultz, and teammate Jonathan Isaac. Fox was viewed as a franchise-changing point guard judging from his blazing speed, can jump all over the gym, and has a high IQ as he made pinpoint passes. However, it wasn't the case in his rookie year. His rookie season, he averaged 12 points per game, 3 rebounds per game, and 4 assists per game. What is really concerning is his field goal percentage of 41% from the field and 30% from 3, which is below league average. Based on how the Kings utilize him, seeing how anus the franchise is, the often fuck up player development left him right except for DeMarcus Cousins. To be honest, Fox was very timid as he didn't have the confidence to shoot three-pointers and his defense is questionable also, although he played only 27 minutes per game. People questioned the Kings about how Fox is showing bust potential, but he later silenced the critics by having a breakout sophomore season where he averaged 17 points per game, 4 rebounds per game, and 7 assists per game at 45% field goal percentage and 37% from 3. He was considered as a candidate for the most improved player award you can tell from his game as he is more confident which has led to improvement in every statistical category. He has improved his defense as he is better on off ball as his defensive win series is a 2.5 compared to 1.1 in his rookie year. They were in the ninth seed, barely missing out the playoffs that will cap off their 13 year playoff drought. It's a huge accomplishment given how Fox led them to a playoff berth in just his second year than Cousins in his entire tenure with this team. But in the entire time Cousins was there, he didn't have a team around him as his second best player was Isaiah Thomas who they traded away two years prior being drafted. Fox's case had Buddy Hill who was also, like I said before, a candidate for the most improved player award and one of the best shooters in the league. That's another topic for a nerdy day. So based on Fox's second year play, he has proven himself as arguably the second best player in his draft class behind Donovan Mitchell. Last year, we questioned the players in his draft class based on their play as the majority of the players are underwhelming and some of them are playing like draft busts. In some cases, some of the players like Lonzo Ball has been disappointing because we put him in these huge expectations to come out of the gate and produce, but that, that's not how it works for some players. Some players need to develop more. That's how it is for some players that will take up two years, such as Giannis, who is arguably the best player in the league. We were thinking about the same thing about Dan De'Aaron Fox in his rookie year, having doubt that he will be just a solid player, but he has proven that he is a rising star in this league. This year, he is averaging 20 points per game, 4 rebounds per game, 7 assists per game at 47% shooting, and 30% from 3. Although his 3-pointer has dipped because his team has to rely on him on the offensive side, because the team has been anus overall. The Kings are in the bottom five in the Western Conference, and the reason why they have been worse is they didn't add players in the 2019 offseason. Dave Yeager was replaced with Luke Walton, who is a much worse coach, and the reason why the Kings are so trash. And the players have been underperforming. Marvin Bagley has not been living up to expectations, and I highly doubt that he will be an all-star player one day. Harrison Barnes has been a bright spot for the team, but he hasn't lit, lived up to his massive four-year $85 million deal. Kent Bazemore has been so anus that I expect him being bathed by the end of the season. So the question is, is De'Aaron Fox is a franchise cornerstone of the Kings? Absolutely. He has been great, and he has immense potential to become a superstar in this league one day. He is only 22 years old and he still has more room to grow, but not only developing him, but surrounding a team that fits his game. Buddy Hills has been a great second option, but I don't really see him as a second option of a championship contender in the long run. 
The Kings need more shooters to complement Fox's game. They have shooters like Bogdan Bartanovic and Marmaja Belisha, but what other shooter they do have? Corey Joseph. He is shooting league average from three on 1.7 attempts. That is not going to cut it. Well, I can tell from Fox's game that he is an average shooter during catch and shoot situations, but not that much of a shot creator. He needs to work on his jumper for him to elevate himself to the next level. So De'Aaron Fox is one of the best young guys in the league and also one of the most underrated players in the league. He has immense star potential, but the Kings are one of the worst franchises in the league. So it doesn't matter how good he'll be because we all know how good he'll be. It's the team that he is surrounded with and how the front office manages the team. Because if the front office fucks up, we can see another player put an MVP but empty stats on a bad team. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. Watch the latest vids on my channel. And that always, this is the A-Man Show signing out.